What is up, guys? Welcome back for week five of the GBA, the Global Battle Association. This week, your Montreal Habsals are taking on the Kansas City Girard Chiefs, co coached by TTM Jolt. That's right, we are taking on Jolt again, third time in league format, third time in the GBA as well, if you want to count the D-League as part of the GBA, which I do. And um, we've won two games and lost zero. So we have a perfect record against Jolt, and we are going to try to keep that. However, as you can see, Jolt has a very nice team. Uh, I think he drafted very well, and it's a, it's a very solid core that he has going for him. So let's go over his squad. He has Magirna, luckily he couldn't Z it. Uh, Mew is a Zemon. Uh, Mega Aerodactyl, Scolipede is his other Zemon, and then we got Manaphy, Gudra, Incineroar, Ninetales, uh, Alola Variation, Breloom, Mismag, and Groudon is his other Uber. So he's got some very scary threats, uh, two very good Zemons in Mew and Scolipede. Uh, luckily he didn't Z his Manaphy, so that's that's kind of a relief. Uh, Magirna, of course, couldn't be Z, but he has Magirna and Groudon, and he has Mega Arrow, of course, one of my favorite uh, Megas in the Draft League format. And then he has a great supporting cast of uh, Gudra, Incineroar, Ninetales, Alola, Breloom, and Mismag. Funnily enough, he has not brought uh, Ninetales, Breloom, or Mismag to any games, I believe. Um, which is actually quite surprising. Uh, I know that there's a there's a combination of like three or four mons that he hasn't brought at all, but that makes sense because his top half of his draft is like just so, so stacked, uh, along with Groudon down at the bottom. Of course, he picked up his Uber last. Uh, it was originally Zekrom and he swapped it out for Groudon, which I think was a great move uh, on his part. His, uh, his electric stopper is such a great mon like Groudon, so. Uh, definitely makes it a little bit tougher for me. So let's go into the build. Uh, a lot of people doubted Mega Mawile coming into this matchup, and I agree, it doesn't do the most, uh, but what it does do is it sca scares out his slower stuff and his uh, his more frail things like uh, Gudra, Ninetales, Breloom, uh, Miss Mag, even Mega Arrow to some extent, because it can't knock me out straight away with Earthquake. Uh, so it does scare those guys out, uh, as well as it doesn't allow Magirna to just completely sweep through me. Um, and that's why we are rocking uh, a max HP spread here. I have 20 spit F, and this is specifically for Expert Belt uh, Alolan Ninetales, which I saw in a mock uh, with HP Fire. The combination of, um, of HP Fire uh, at plus 2 plus Hail would knock me out typically. Uh, with this spread, it doesn't. It leaves me at like 1%, so it allows me to get off a, su a sucker punch later on in the game. So I'm able to keep my mobile around if necessary. So that's the spread. Uh, mostly max attack, of course, that's to be able to punch holes through his team. And once again, Mawile's ro rocking stealth rocks this week. Uh, this is gonna just be a trend this season, apparently. Uh, but we got Iron Head Play Rough and uh, Sucker Punch. It's the first time I'm running Steel Stab on Mega Mawile as well. I feel like it does good uh, work here in this matchup. It hits Magirna the hardest outside of Fire Fang, but Fire Fang doesn't really deal with anything else. Maybe Breloom, that's about it. Um, and like Groudon. Uh, would take a lot of damage, of course, because it becomes uh, sun boosted. But I think that Iron Head is just the better option overall. Of course, it hits Mega Arrow for super effective damage, whereas Playroff might not knock it out from full. Iron Head definitely will. So that's Mega Maw. Togavar coming again this week. Uh, I believe it has not missed it. It might, it might have missed one week, but. Next up, we have uh, Bad Signal, Lunala, Choice Specs this time. And yes, I am rocking Moonblast, no more Dazzling Gleam, I'm not messing that up anymore. Uh, we got Moon Guys Beam, Psy Shock, Moonblast, and Sleep Talk. So, um, this is one of my switch-ins to his Breloom, if I believe that he's going to sp uh, Spore. If I don't believe that he's going to Spore, I'm probably going to go out into a different Mon. Uh, but Breloom is a big threat to me, uh, with Mock Punch, with Bullet Seed, with Spore. The, those those moves are very hard for me to deal with, and Rock Tomb as well. If he brings like a Life Orb uh, 3 attack Spore set, then uh, my team is looking very very weak to it, uh, and I can't really afford that. Like Reuniclus can't really switch in on two uh, three hit bullet seeds, so uh, it makes it very difficult. Salamence being the only one, and then there's Rock Tomb and the Flying Stab. Of course, is either reliant on Hurricane or Fly, so not really things that I want to be going for. So Lunala is kind of like a backup. Uh, to if I believe he's going to uh, either go for a Mach Punch or a Spore. I have Sleep Talk on there to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, and then three attacks, kind of like a, the way the hair cross works with running Sleep Talk. Uh, same, same idea, I don't need anything other than these three attacks. So Moongeist, Beam, Psy Shock, and Moonblast. Moongeist really hits his team hard. Like the only thing that can switch in properly is Incineroar. Even AV Mag takes like 35 
from Specs Moongeist, so it's doing a lot of damage to anything. Uh, Moonblast is there to be able to hit the Gudra for super effective. That's also the reason that I have Psy Shock. Uh, either or, whatever I want to lock myself into realistically. Uh, and uh, it also hits the Balloon for super effective and whatnot. And it hits the uh, the Incineroar the hardest outside of Focus Blast, which I don't want to run. Uh, and then we have uh, Psyshock, like I said, that's going to be able to hit the, the Gudra super effectively uh, and really be able to, uh, to be a good move that I can lock into. So uh, the speed on here is for Max Jolly Bloom, I believe. Uh, that outspeeds that, if I'm not mistaken, that hits 134. Uh, so that I'm able to outspeed that and uh, as well as like Timid, uh, not Timid, sorry, Modest, Gudra, stuff like that. So uh, I think the speed is fine on here uh, and it also outspeeds Defensive Groudon. And that's a big part of, of the reason that I'm running so much speed. Uh, the rest is into HP and Spadef. Uh, and I have a little bit in defense, of course, that four EVs. Uh, I should be able to take two ground on Earthquakes. Um, not Precipice, but Earthquake, I should be able to take two uh, from Shadow Shield. Uh, so I should be fine there. And uh, granting I outspeed it, uh, if it is a more defensive set, which I expect considering that I have Mega Mawile as well as Tyranitar, Cobalion, Salamence, all mons that do a lot of damage to his team, I do expect a defensive Groudon on this game. Uh, and I should be able to outspeed it and easily two it KO it with Moongeist Beam, if not knock it out after a little bit of prior damage. So that's uh, Lunala, Bat Signal. Moving on to Grandina, the Salamence once again coming with a more defensive set this week. We have um, Modest actually with Heat Wave uh, with four EVs. This is actually enough to take out Berloom after Rocks, I believe. Uh, and it also does good damage to Magirna as well as Groudon. Uh, because of the fact that Sun goes up, Scallopede as well. I think I take out Scallopede after Rocks as well, if I'm not mistaken, with this spread. Uh, and then we have Max HP with uh, 132 defense. This is, makes me a good switch into a lot of his physical attackers like Incineroar, Breloom, Groudon. Uh, of course, I have to watch out for Stone Edge and stuff like that, as, as well as with uh, Mega Arrow uh, and Rock Slide from Scallopede, but I should be able to take them thanks to Intimidate. Uh, and then the 116 speed puts at us at the same speed as Lunala, so once again outspeeding Max Jolly Breloom. Moving on, we have first, comer, first time uh, coming to a game, Cobalion Hohenheim. Uh, with Steelium Z, Iron Head, co uh, Close Combat, uh, Swords Dance, and Rock Polish. So I just went max attack, uh, enough speed for his base 100s and Mew and uh, Manaphy. This also covers, of course, um, Groudon and, and Berloom and all of those, uh, Gudra as well. And then just Close Combat Iron Head just does work to his team. Once I get a Rock Polish up, I'm faster than uh, his Mega Arrow, I'm faster than I believe any Scarfer on his team as well. Scallopy doesn't kill me with one Earthquake, even if it's Life Orb, uh, because of the uh, the investment as well as just Cobalion's natural bulk. Uh, and getting up a Rock Polish or Swords then shouldn't be too difficult, honestly, looking at his team. There should be multiple opportunities to do so. If Manaphy doesn't burn me, for example, uh, if I have an Intimidate off on his Mega Arrow and it kills my, uh, my Salamence, then I, I am able to go into Cobalion and live two Earthquakes uh, and get off a Rock Polish and a Swords Dance if I want to. And then... Uh, and then just stuff like Ninetales, uh, obviously will outspeed me if he runs a max speed set, uh, and he'll be able to, to hit me up with a Moonblast, which will do a lot of damage, but I should still be able to get off a Rock Polish on that thing. If he decides to go for Veil, I can get off a Swords Dance of the turn after. Uh, just plain and simple, this thing does a lot of, a lot of work to his team, and I'm looking for it to, uh, to hopefully sweep. Moving on to Greg the Rotom Wash. So I absolutely need this thing because of Manaphy and Groudon. Uh, I'm running a Choice Scarf set though, and it might not seem like the best idea to run a Choice Scarf set against a, a Groudon. The thing is, his Manaphy, once it gets up a Tail Glow, is a huge threat. And there's nothing on my team to deal with it outside of this Rotom Wash. So, his Manaphy is not Z. This is the good thing, is that his Manaphy is not a Z move attacker. Meaning that I can always trick it, and I can always give it a Choice Scarf. If it locks into Energy Ball, then the rest of my team can take it on quite nicely. Like Salamence will be able to deal with it. Uh, Cobalion will as well. Uh, and I also have a little uh, tricky set here coming up. Uh, no pun intended on the move trick, but I have a, a really interesting set coming in uh, in our sixth slot, and you will see. So, uh, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hydro Pump trick. Uh, Thunderbolt should be able to knock out Manaphy after a Volt Switch, no problem, even if he's Wakan. And then we have Hydro Pump on there because I need to uh, potentially lock into that late game if he still has Mega Arrow and Groudon around. Uh, I figured that um, 
leading with this thing, if he decides to lead with his main rockers, either Mega Arrow or Groudon is going to be a good idea. If I trick the Mega Groudon, that's just as good as getting off damage on it, honestly, locking it into uh, anything. Um, Earthquake or uh, or Stone Edge during any point of the game is really good for me because I have mons that take advantage of both. Uh, this Rotom in particular takes advantage of it being locked into Earthquake as well as Salamence to some extent. Uh, I didn't talk about Salamence's uh, moves by the way, but uh, we do have Wish uh, Roost on here because I want to be able to pass a Wish into Lunala. And Lunala's spread is actually enough to take a Shadow Ball, I believe, from, um, from Magearna or Manaphy. Uh, and be able to go back up to full. So that's that's the idea with uh, with Wish on there. And Defog is, of course, to preserve Shadow Shield. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so the idea is to take advantage of a, a choice locked Groudon if I do end up tricking it. Uh, Trick is a very, very powerful move in this matchup, uh, and I feel like it, it could do a lot of uh, damage to his, uh, his game plan. Not so much his team, but his game plan in general. So speaking of the tricky set, uh, we are, I'm gonna show you guys it right now. So if I choice lock his Manaphy and Energy Ball, um, at plus three, what I can do is I can then go into uh, Reuniclus, which is Max Spadef, Trick Room Psych Up, <laughs> and this is this is insane. Uh, so basically, this is uh, a set that's designed to beat Calm Mind Magirna as well as Calm Mind Manaphy. Psy Shock is there to be able to uh, to basically ignore their Spadef boosts and just go through their, their physical defense. And if they happen to be Calm Mind variants, which both of them could very well be, uh, I'll be able to uh, Trick Room up, Psych up, recover, and then start Psy Shocking through. The only Mon that prevents me from completely blowing his team apart with this kind of set if, if I get a plus six, uh, is going to be Incineroar, and as you can see, the rest of the team actually really deals with Incineroar re well. Um, Lunala sort of forces either a U-turn or a Dark move, in which case Salamence or uh, Mega Mawile can come in quite reliably, as well as Rotom in a lot of cases. Um, if he's not locking, it, like if he's not going for knockoff, I do expect an AV set because of uh, Lunala, but. Um, if I'm able to uh, severely damage his Incineroar to the point of rocks knocking it out, this Reuniclus just wins. Uh, if it gets the plus three through Psych Up uh, on Manaphy's Tail Glow. So that's that's the idea of locking it into uh, Energy Ball potentially. So that's uh, and plus three Energy Ball will not take me below half. By the way, it's uh, this is a Spadef Reuniclus. It has a ton of bulk on the on the specially defensive side. Of course, it's not as good of a check to his physical attackers like. Uh, let's say a, a bulk up Mew, a Mega Aerodactyl, his, his Groudon, obviously I'd be taking a lot more damage from them, uh, but this isn't my main switch into them, so I don't care. Uh, this is my, my answer to his Calm Mind setup sweepers. So that's, uh, that's Reuniclus, that's it, and uh, that's the whole team. So now let's jump into the game. Let me, let's see what Jolt brought to this game. So he has Mew, Manaphy, Magearna, Incineroar, Groudon, and Mega Arrow. So I saw this team and I was a little bit surprised not to see either Breloom or Scallopede, either or. I was kind of uh, on the fence about which of the two would come, but he didn't bring either, so I was a little bit surprised. He did bring the Incineroar as expected. I only saw it in one of three mocks and I was surprised by my opponents not having brought it, uh, even though it's such a good Lunala check and forces the bring of Focus Blast. Uh, not in my case, of course, but... Um, but Joel did, did in fact bring the Incineroar. Groudon, of course, had to come because it's a great defensive check to, to my mons like Mawile and, and Salamence and Cobalion, as I mentioned, the team builder. Uh, Mega Arrow puts a lot of pressure on me because it's faster than everything. Uh, and the only thing that I have that's faster is my Rotom. And then we have uh, Mew on here. I see Mew, Manaphy, and Magirna, and I was like, okay, so he brought all of these three, these these like base 100 across uh, legends. Obviously, that's not the case with Magirna, but it hits base 600 t uh, total. Uh, so I'm like, hmm, they all have something in common. They all learn Shadow Ball, <laughs> and I was like, Okay, I, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to relieve the pressure off of your Incineroar by giving all of your special attackers access to break my Lunala Shadow Shield and knock it out after. Makes a lot of sense, especially that two of them outspeed Lunala naturally, being Mew and Manaphy. So I'm like, okay, all right, this this does definitely make sense. I see what he's trying to do. Uh, and if the arrow has crunch or pursuit, that could also be an issue. So I gotta watch out because he could have four times effective coverage on like possibly all six. I don't think Groudon gets anything and I don't think he'd run a dark move on Groudon to begin with, but he could definitely have dark coverage on five out of, or dark or ghost coverage on five out of the six. So I have to be careful and time when I bring Lunala into this game. So I expect Jolt 
to lead with a rocker here. I expect him to lead with Mew, Groudon, or uh, or the Aerodactyl. And I figured that leading off with Rotom uh, would be my best game plan no matter what, as I could get off a Volt Switch uh, or get off a trick on his Groudon potentially. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna lead off with Rotom and he's, as he decides to lead off with Mew. So I'm like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. I expect some kind of status move to come out here. He could potentially also go for Taunt, preventing me from Toxic, anything of the sort. I know that Jolt likes to run Taunt Mew. I'm gonna reveal early that I'm Choice Scarfed. I didn't wanna do this, but I wanted to chip away at the Mew and see its item to see if it was leftovers uh, as early as possible during this game. So I'm going to Volt Switch out into my Reuniclus and I'm actually gonna let it get toxic here and I'm Overcoat, if you guys didn't notice in the uh, in the team builder, I'm Overcoat and that was because I wanted to be have another switch into Breloom Spore and be able to force it out. Uh, unfortunately, that's gonna cost me because my Reuniclus is now uh, toxic poisoned and if he does have a Calm Mind Sweeper in the back, uh, I'm kind of boned. But I'm gonna end up going in them all while here because I don't I don't expect them to have uh, Will O Wisp, but he actually reveals Shadow Ball here. Uh, and it's gonna get a spadef drop, I believe, on this turn on my Mawile, which is a little bit annoying for sure. Uh, but I know that after Mega Evolving, I can live another Shadow Ball and uh, I can just get up rocks here. Um, as long as he doesn't have Earth Power, which I don't really expect from you, if anything, it's like Aura Sphere. Uh, which would be the same base power as Shadow Ball. Um, I'm not too worried, but he actually goes for Volt Switch. So he's revealed three of his moves, Toxic, Volt Switch, and Shadow Ball. So it's, it's sort of a more pivoting support Mew. Uh, but I am going to get up my rocks, and this is actually going to be quite important because uh, the only thing he has to get rid of them is his Mega Arrow, which takes 25% uh, from Stealth Rocks upon switching. And... Um, his Incineroar does as well. It also takes 25%, and that's the Mon that I want to wear down, is Incineroar, so that I can get in this Lunala that I'm about to switch in as many times as possible and put pressure on him with Moonguy's Beam. He's going to go for Swords Dance here with his, his Groudon, so I get a free switch into Lunala, which is awesome. Rocks don't go up. Uh, his, uh, he doesn't get off any damage on my Shadow Shield, so this is amazing. And he's going to switch in his uh, Incineroar right here, uh, it's going to take 25% from rocks, or 24.9, as mentioned earlier, and I'm going to go for a Moonguy's Beam, and I'm going to get to see what this Incineroar is, uh, as it ends up taking about 24% once again. It doesn't drop below half from my Specs Moonguy's Beam, uh, so that tells me immediately that it is an Assault Vest variant. Luckily, Incineroar doesn't get Pursuit, and this is why I wanted to bring Lunala and bring it as a, a Specs Mon to this game, it was because I could switch it out whenever I wanted. So I'm going to go into Salamence, I'm going to get off... Uh, the Intimidate, as he goes for a knockoff, so he's gonna get rid of my leftovers, it's not a big deal, I don't really need uh, Salamence as much as this game, his Breloom didn't come, uh, he's mainly using special attackers, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna pull out a switch, a double into Rotom, because I didn't expect his Incineroar to want to stay in on a potential Earthquake, but he actually chooses to stay in and go for a U-turn, so I take a little bit of damage on Rotom, but it's not a big deal, because he's just gonna bring back in Mew here, I believe the sun was about to go down, uh, exactly, so if he went into Groudon, it would have to deal with, uh, with Hydro Pump. Uh, so I'm gonna go for Volt Switch, and I do catch his Mew staying in once again. I'm gonna get off a little more damage here, and now I'm going to go in back into my Mawile, uh, basically sacking it off to what I thought would be uh, another Shadow Ball, but he actually goes for another Volt Switch, and I'm gonna stay at 28%. Uh, and what Mawile is doing here is it's forcing switch-ins uh, into stuff that uh, have to take chip damage through rocks, and I can see what he wants to do, uh, and Mawile is still alive, so this is really good. So I'm going to switch out on his Magirna into my Reuniclus as he reveals yet another Shadow Baller, so he's going to get off a little more damage on me here uh, with Shadow Ball. Luckily, I'm Spideff, so I'm not going to take too much from it, and I do have leftovers. Unfortunately, the Toxic is wearing me down, so uh, this could prove to be bad if he does end up being Shift Gear, but I'm going to go for a Recover here. And I'm going to get back some uh, some health uh, through the use of Recover and, and Leftovers. The Toxic will not bring me below where I just was, so we should be good. He didn't get a Spit F drop either, so I'm going to Recover here. I'm going to get back a little bit of health. I just want this thing, like, partially healthy enough to where I can get off a Trick Room later in the game, essentially. I was using it as a pivot into his Magirna just to see what it would do. So he's going to uh, now go for another Shadow Ball, of course, as now I'm going to switch out into my Salamence. 
and I'm going to be able to eat up the Shadow Ball uh, and try to get off a Heat Wave here. So long as he's not Scarfed, which I don't think he would be. He does seem to be like max special attack on his Magirna, but I don't think he's Scarfed. So he's going to get off a Shadow Ball. He doesn't get a Spit F drop. So I should be able to get off a Heat Wave here. Even if he's Scarfed, he just goes for another Shadow Ball. If he doesn't crit me, then I'm fine. And uh, we're going to get off a lot of damage here, which tells me that his Magirna is actually not Assault Vest. Which means from this range, from 52-ish percent, even max HP Magirna will die to Lunala's Moongeist Beam. And being that his Incineroar has, is already at about 51%, I don't think that he can risk switching it in here. Besides, my Lunala just comes back in later anyway and just goes for a, uh, a Moongeist Beam once again on this uh, on this Magirna. So, one Uber knocking out another. Here we go. We fire off the Moongeist Beam and down goes Magirna. It's not a Salt Vest, so it drops. And we knock out that, so that's great. Now he brings back in his Incineroar, which I thought was a little bit premature because I still have decent switch-ins to this thing. Uh, even if he ha goes for a dark move here, I have my Mawile and I'm willing to sack it as I've already shown against his Mew. So I'm going to switch out, I'm going to go into Mawile, and he actually ends up U-turning here, does Jolt. And he's going to uh, to be able to gain some momentum on my Mawile, yes, but he doesn't knock it out. So once again, it's still alive and it's still a sack. Uh, and this is great for me because now he goes into his uh, his Mega Aerodactyl. And while I could have Sucker Punched here, I decided if Jolt gets ballsy and decides to get up rocks on me or go, go for a Home Claws, I don't want to play this game with Sucker Punch. So instead, I'm going to just go for an Iron Head here and I want to knock out this Mega Arrow as soon as possible. And that's that's exactly what I'm going to try to do as he goes for an Earthquake instead and he knocks out my Mawile, but that's fine. Like I said, I was just sacking this thing. <laughs> that, that was the idea the entire time. So he gets off an Earthquake here. He's going to do, uh, he's, well, he's going to do enough to knock me out, obviously. But now I get back in my nice little Rotom. Greg is back. And while I could go for a Hydro Pump, anticipating his uh, Groudon, I feel like it's still too early, and instead I'm just going to go for a Thunderbolt and knock out his uh, Mega Aerodactyl. I get a crit there. The crit didn't matter. Um, it shouldn't have mattered. Even with, like, a lot of bulk, he should have died to uh, to a Thunderbolt. It does, like, a min of, like, 70, uh, 74.7 uh, to a heavily bulk-invested uh, Mega Arrow, so I don't think that mattered at all. As now he's going to bring in his Groudon, and I'm going to switch back out into my Lunala, and this is what I'm saying. This Lunala with specs is doing work because it's able to come in on this Groudon every single time. This time he decides, I'm going to break this thing's Shadow Shield, it's getting annoying. As you can see, it doesn't do that much damage, only does 60 to me, uh, 60 HP, so another one wouldn't knock me out. Uh, very easily I'll be able to take it. I think I would have even taken Precipice, but right here he shows that he's Protect. So he's Earthquake, Protect, Sword Stance, and I'm thinking, what's your last move? <laughs> Is it Stone Edge? Is it, uh, like... Is it rock polish? Because it can't. It, it can only be one of the two. So whichever one it's not, that that's it's good for me in a certain way. So he's gonna bring in his Incineroar. I'm gonna go for Moon Guy's Beam. So if he's not rock polish, then I always outspeed him with this Lunala, which is great. Uh, and if he's Stone Edge as his last move, uh, then he can't. Uh, like I can still trick him, basically with my Rotom. So that's great. Uh, and now he's gonna go into uh, into his Mew right here. I'm still gonna save my Lunala because it can still hit his Groudon, and I know that this Mew is faster than me, and he knows that too. So I'm gonna switch out, I'm gonna go into Greg. I know that Greg can take one hit, I've seen three out of four of this thing's moves. Uh, and he's gonna go for a Shadow Ball, and I'm easily gonna be able to, to eat that up. Now I'm gonna go for a Volt Switch here, thinking that he would just sack off his Mew at this point, but he actually makes a nice play, and he goes back into Groudon. Uh, I could have Hydro Pumped for sure, and, uh, and hit this thing with a with a hydro pump which would have then been uh increased damage the next turn because his sunlight fades but he decides to uh to actually uh, switch in his grout on hard which was a good play i think i think that hydro pump would have actually missed out on the ko on um on Mew because of the fact that sun was up and that's why i decided to go for a volt switch now right here jolt decides to go for a swords dance and uh he's going to raise his attack and i'm gonna go for a moon guys beam i'm gonna get off like 85 percent on this groudon which is insane uh he's up at full he has no reason to protect so i'm just gonna get off as much damage as i can on the groudon i'm gonna bring it down uh maybe not 85 maybe somewhere more like 78 percent but that's still really good damage uh, basically after his leftovers i believe he climbed back up to uh 31 if i'm not mistaken 
Uh, so he should be at about 31 right here. And now I'm going to bring in my Cobalion. And I'm going to pause it right here as soon as Cobalion comes in. And I'm going to explain uh, my play. So for some reason, it's not pausing. I'm not sure why. F4 is supposed to be paused. But uh, let me just do this, this. Okay. So um, as you can see, he switches out into his Mew. Uh, I intended to... Um, I had a lot of options, basically, with my Cobalion on that turn. So, his ground one's at 31. From any range of HP, if he's a max, max HP variant, I should knock him out from 31-ish. Um, I, I had my HP bar, of course. He looked to be around, like, 30 to 31. Close combat does 29.4 to a max HP ground on. So, I was like, okay, I can possibly knock it out with uh, a close combat. But if I don't get that roll... I'm screwed <laughs> because if um, if he lives and he uh, he knocks out my Cobalion, I just have Rotom and a Toxic Reuniclus left, and that's not good. That's not going to cut it against Manaphy. So I need to knock out the Groudon now. Was my train of thought, and as a result, I'm going to go for my Z move which does more damage than close combat, of course. So I'm gonna fire off the uh, Z Steel, but he does switch into his Mew. Now, had I gone for a Swords Dance on the turn that he switched to Mew, straight win, easy win. There's nothing standing in my way. I keep my Corkscrew Crash for the Groudon in case his mana he burns me as I go for close combat. Uh, Scald wouldn't kill me. It would leave me alive if he burns me. I still have enough turns to where I can knock out the Groudon, even if I don't. <coughs> Even if he gets like a, a double or a triple protect, uh, I'm able to bring in my um, my uh, Rotom after and just Hydro Pump him, and so long as I hit, I win. Now, I'm going to go for a Swords Dance here against his Manaphy after I knock out his Mew, and he's going to go for Surf. He doesn't even have uh, Scald on this set, which is really good for me because there's no chance he burns me. So long as he doesn't crit me, I think I'm fine. He should do a little over 50% here, which he does, and he reveals to be Leftovers. Now... Once again, I am going to pause right here and explain uh, what's about to happen. So, his Manaphy, if it has any sort of HP investment, um, should live this close combat. No matter what, it'll live this close combat if it has uh, like a good amount of HP on it. Uh, if he has zero HP, I actually have a guaranteed knockout. So, uh, and if it's anywhere in the middle, this becomes like a 50-50 roll, right? So I'm going to attack the Manaphy with close combat. Even if I do upwards of like 85% and he lives, Rotom can come in and click Hydro Pump twice. I need to connect both Hydro Pumps to win, but that would be my, my game plan at the end of the game, would just be hit two Hydro Pumps and you win the game. There's about a 70%, 67% chance that that happens. There's a, there's a good chance that I can hit two Hydro Pumps in a row, knock out his Manaphy, knock out his Groudon. Um, obviously he could protect with his Groudon and try to get out of range of the, um, of the Hydro Pump, but even with Sun Up, it should be able to kill his Groudon, even if he gets like a double protect. So I should be in the clear here. So I'm going to go for close combat on his Manaphy and, uh, I'm going to get off the damage right here. As you're going to see, I end up critting Manaphy. So what was a 50-50 roll becomes a guaranteed kill on the Manaphy, and as a result, a guaranteed win. So, Jolt and I haven't really had a Haxalus game since we, we started playing against each other back in D-League. Uh, of course, I got that crit earlier on the arrow, which, I mean, if he was max fit F, maybe it would have mattered, but I don't think it did, but I think this crit mattered quite a bit, uh, because ultimately, if I had not crit him, and he would have lived and knocked out my Cobalion, there was a chance that I would have missed one of the two Hydros and lost subsequently. So, uh, of course, there was always the option of me going into Reuniclus after and clicking Psyshock, and Psyshock potentially knocking out the Groudon, but I very much doubt it, as it was probably defensive. I haven't checked Jolt's team. But either way, we were able to pull out the win. I think we played solidly. I think that the build was good. Now, this is probably the most important part right here, is that I don't think that this is Jolt's best build. And I'm almost sure of it because I know the way that Jolt works. He usually makes two to three teams per matchup. And if he thinks, if he's convinced that he's going to end up playing me against in, uh, again in playoffs, then he would have saved his uh, his better squad, his better build 
for that time and I completely agree with that train of thought. I personally decided to uh, bring a strong build against him, something that could cover all bases to get me a win. I don't think that this is the absolute best build that I could bring. Uh, I don't think that Mawile really did anything in this game, and I think that it could have easily been another rocker in its position. Uh, I think that the Cobalion set could have been optimized potentially with a better item. Uh, it didn't have to be Stelium Z. The Reuniclus could have been a different set as well. It could have been a sweeper set, and that would have easily been able to take him down with Magic Guard instead of uh, Overcoat, seeing as he didn't bring the Breloom. But everything's up in the air now. Like, every everything for our rematch later on, if we do end up facing each other in playoffs, is going to be up in the air. Anything can happen, any sets can change, but we do end up getting this victory. So your Montreal Habsols are now four and one. And I believe that we um, go and see Randy's game before you hear what I'm about to say, go and watch his game on his side. But I do believe, spoilers, that uh, Randy did lose this week uh, and it's his first loss. So he goes to four and one, but I believe we just passed him in rankings as well. Uh, we are first in, in the Akala division. And I think, if I'm not mistaken as well, the only team that's ahead of me in the standings is Lars, who's undefeated. So you guys can go and check out that game as well. But uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's our game against Jolt. I'm glad we were able to pull out yet another win. We are the TTM Slayer, uh, as a lot of people have referred to us as. Uh, and uh, my only loss being against Styx, who had a, a crazy good team uh, back in CPC. But... Um, I need to now beat Danza, and that's our week six opponent. Uh, so we are gonna be taking on Danza. I actually play Danza in about uh, like six, seven hours from now uh, after this recording. So I'm trying to get some mocks done, get my team gen, get everything set up as well. Uh, all while recording this game, editing it and uploading it for you guys for Sunday. So um, I am recording this on Saturday, by the way. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. We're gonna try to take on uh, or take down rather two TTM members one after another. We'll see if we can pull it off. Uh, if we can, then great. If we can't, then I'm still going to be four and two. Uh, Danza does have a scary team. He hasn't been doing the best. He's one and four with it, unfortunately. But uh, but he definitely has some big, big threats like Genesect and Palkia. So you guys will see that matchup next week. Either way, let me know what you guys thought of this game. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like down below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on how we're doing, how we're playing the team, how we're building, all that sort of stuff. Go and check out Jolt. His link will be in the description down below. If you guys don't know the token minorities, you will very much enjoy their content. A lot of draft league content and high level draft league content at that and uh, hopefully their uh, Their TCG con content starts to come back as well because I'm sort of missing it If you're if you're listening to this sticks or even jolt and pass on the message I'm definitely missing the TCG content. So I'd love if it would come back at some point uh, No rush no pressure of course, but uh, but they have a great channel So go and check them out first link in the description as well Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already if this is your first time on the channel or otherwise And I will catch you guys next week for our week's six match up against the other TTM member, Danza. See you guys then. Ciao.